we are celebrating Africa. We are celebrating the fact that there's a conversation that, you know, has been brewing. In fact, Africa's time is now, and we are focusing on youth empowerment, specifically on the continent, on the beautiful motherland. And I am joined by a woman of many hats. This woman, I don't know where to start. I mean, communications expert and now author. And uh, we're going to be talking about the brand new book, Youth Can. Liz and Tojira, welcome to the studio. I love when I have guests. Welcome to the show. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. I can hear your very crispy, nice voice. <laughs> Yours is amazing. I have never met you in person, but, um, you know, just seeing how your uh, career has grown. I mean, um, back in the day, um, it was all about, you know, stay in one lane. This is your profile. This is what you do. But now you're using your platform to have a necessary conversation about young people and not just about Kenya, but across the continent Huh. Absolutely. Where did this idea come from? You always wanted to be an author? Yes, I, you know, writing has been my passion since I was very young. In fact, the first article to ever be published, I was only 10 years old. So wow. Can imagine my excitement and having framed it. And it's been, I always like describing myself as a storyteller. Yes. Trying to change the narrative of Africa, looking at the glass half full. Right. As opposed to half empty. So there are, of course, there's the pain growing up in a, a continent where we don't seem to have enough opportunities. Uh, we don't seem to have proper governance because of corruption um, and impunity. But then there's also a lot of hope. And, you know, young people carry that hope. That's that's my feeling. And that's why this book was born, because, you know, Based on the work I do, I've traveled far and wide. And everywhere I travel, I meet young people who are so passionate about their countries, right. about contributing positively to their communities, to their development agenda. And I wish everybody could see that. Mm. I love the fact that, um, you know, you're looking at Africa as a block. It's about time. It's a dream of mine. And to see, you know, a young Kenyan woman who has that vision, has that dream. And you've always been a storyteller in different platforms. And now you are bringing other people's stories to the forefront. So this is almost like a passion project, something that is going to outlive your legacy. I mean, looking at um, the people you have reached, the work that you do, it goes hand in hand. And um, with what people are saying, it's time for Africa now. But you're saying it's been Africa's time. We just need to streamline a couple of things and also to have young Africans look at themselves as they matter. They have stories to tell. There's inspiration. Um, yes, there are challenges, but there's a lot that can be done on the continent. Um, one of the things that I loved is the fact that you collected stories um, and it's different people of different ages because there's a lot to learn from the old school as well. Tell us about that. Absolutely. Um, so for me, I, I believe every young person stands on the shoulders of giants, people who pass the baton. And this is a conversation I always have with people who are older than me. Who are you passing that baton to? Hmm. And it was very important for me in the book. The youngest person featured in the book is only nine years old. Nine. A social entrepreneur nine from Nigeria called Grace Busari, who started her own line of uh, Ankara teddy bears. And the oldest person featured in the book is our very own Professor Bitangen Demo. And we all know how passionate he is about the fourth industrial revolution and also passionate about young people. He lectures in the University of Nairobi, issues to do with entrepreneurship. And for me, each chapter starts with an expert or thought leader within those 12 chapters, which break down various scopes of the economy. We are focusing on the public sector, corporate sector, development sector, um, sports sector, health sector, you name it. And we have a thought leader who's over 35 years old, just giving their sentiments and their insights, their learning lessons, their failures, their successes to the young people in Africa. And then we have three to four features of young Africans breaking barriers. These people have not been born with a silver spoon in their mouths. They've had to work hard to be and to become what they are currently. Wow. I mean, you're talking to me because 
I come from a background where I consider myself African and we're having a lot of young Africans who feel like the story should be you should be able to thrive anywhere you land on the continent. And I think the bigger conversation, as you put it, is just having, um, you know, people that have been there to share their experiences and what can we do moving forward. And I love that you are discussing from angles of different spheres. Um, You've mentioned health, um, something you're particularly uh, very interested in and you practice. Currently, um, I've also seen a couple of tweets coming in when I was teasing that you're going to be on the show. Uh, questions about, um, you know, why is it that we don't see a lot of Kenyan women uh, as authors, you know, and they've got a lot to share. I think um, we tend to believe that um, some of the best authors come from West Africa. But yet we've got Liz, you know, right here, East African girl doing her thing. Um, there's a misconception that there are no stories to tell from East Africa. You mentioned Nigeria. Who do you have from Uganda, Kenya? Wow, Monique, we have so many stories from 22 different African countries covering Anglophone, Lusophone, and Francophone. Right. And I was very intentional about that because I wanted people to see it doesn't matter what language you speak, what religion you're from, what kind of upbringing you had, what are some of the circumstances that surround you. What governance do you have? The challenges we have as young Africans are very similar. Right. And I wanted the book to resonate with anybody. You know, if it's somebody reading the book from Kilifi here in Kenya, mm. it resonates with somebody from Lesotho, mm. it resonates with somebody from South Africa, from Ghana, from Uganda. So we have people from as far as Cape Verde, nice. uh, Guinea, Conakry. Angola, Lesotho, South Africa, Nigeria, Uganda, Tanzania, you name it. And Sierra Leone, there are quite a number of countries. I can't name the 22 of them right. for now. But it, it's really, for me, it's the resonance. It's to show that whatever you are going through within the context that you're in is similar to what another young African is going through. And for us to be able, I mean, Young Africans are the future of this continent. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, 65 and 65% of our population in Africa is under 35. True. I mean, there's so much demographic dividend. And how do we leverage on that? Mm. I am so tired. I think since I was five, six, seven, to always hear, you know, young people are the future of Africa. No, the future is now, today. I not love that. tomorrow, but today. Oh, my goodness. You just... <laughs> That's what we want to hear. You know, one of the things I see with young Africans, you know, I have a lot of clubs that I'm part of where we are caught at a crossroads, you know, trying to hold on to our traditions and still embrace um, some of the positives from the West. And, you know, we're living in very interesting times as Africans. You know, we, we're still African and we're still, you know, uh, moving forward, trying to, you know, maximize on the tools that we have, social media being one of them. Um there's a lot of challenges whenever people have those um, positive stories. They're inspiring because it's not easy. And I think one of the things yeah. that are, you know, similar among the people that you profiled is the fact that um, they had hurdles. There's lessons to learn. What is the most inspiring story in that book? <laughs> that is always the most difficult <laughs> question to answer because they're all so different, right. diverse, um, there are stories of so much resilience, you know. I can think of a story from Liberia, right. from Manakabe Di Zombo, who, you know, she's a senior gender officer in the National Election Commission. And Liberia is predominantly Muslim. It's, you know, where the culture, you know, kind of dictates that the place of a woman is um, possibly to raise children, ETC. But you see people like Manakabe rising above that, rising above the barriers that have been brought about because of the culture, because of the religion, mm. because of so many things that surround her. I, if I move over to Palesa Libo, who is from Lesotho, uh, Palesa had different challenges while growing up and she hasn't even finished um, campus, but she was resilient enough to say, you know what, because I'm so passionate about technology, she currently teaches young kids robotics and coding. Nice. Yeah. 
you know, featured people like from Uganda, Dr. Natalie Bitature, who has a PhD at only 31, doing so much in terms of entrepreneurship and, you know, um, pushing the agenda for young women into entrepreneurship. And just going back to something very interesting that you mentioned, that of the tools that we have. I feel we are a gifted generation because when you look at the past generations, they, we have access to information. Right. Our only challenge is filtering that information. And I was very intentional of using hashtag youth can right. in the title of the book. I think I'm the only author who has a hashtag. <laughs> very catchy, <laughs> by the way. Because, you know, everybody in this 85% of the people featured in this book, I reached out to them via social media wow. after doing my research. Mm. I do not know them. We've never physically met. Mm. But because of the research I did, having conversations with them, listening to their stories, verifying them. Um, I mean, you know, it's about leveraging the tools that we have for social good right. as opposed of trolling to trolling. When you speak of inspiring stories to be honest monique it's so hard yes. to name one by one but i think of 21 year old niel deng who was originally from south sudan who at a very young age because of the civil war in um, south sudan with his parents had to go to ethiopia in ethiopia they were attacked by militia and had to trek all the way to kakuma camp but you know, Nial is such a perfect example of young Africans who see the glass half full. Right. You know, a lot of us, when we're talking about challenges, we don't think about not having a nationality, you mm. know, as a refugee. So he's been advocating for a lot of refugee rights, advocating for people to view refugees as people that can positively contribute to the national agenda, development agenda of the countries they reside in. So those kind of stories, I mean, they're so powerful. It's, it's, I always say I wanted to create a book that doesn't have an expiry date. Right. Something that you can always reference as a learning tool, as something to keep you going, as the fuel to your fire. Um, you know, it's it's just extraordinary young Kenyans featured here. Oh wow! You know, um, I love I love any conversation that has to all do with African. African. <laughs> I hear you. We're all African. You know, anything to do with Africa and young people. I mean, that excites me. And as soon as I, you know, um, read through uh, what the book was about, and I saw how much you how much time you took just to put it together. Um, I realized that I was not the only one who found this absolutely inspiring. So um, since you launched the book in August, um, I'm looking at this and it's been over 800 copies of your book, uh, Youth Can, that have been purchased. And that means about 14 copies purchased each day since the launch. You are talking to someone. I'm telling you. Imagine. And you know what? I wasn't too sure. You know, as a creative, when you put out something in the market, right. you're not too sure how people will receive it. Mm. But the response has been so phenomenal. Right. And I could never be grateful enough um, because of the narrative that, you know, Africans don't have a reading culture, but mm. if there is a reading culture. Right. It's just that people are very specific and targeted about what they want to read. Mm. And I think I think it's time to share the good news about Africa. It's time to talk about people that are still here, you know, and celebrate them while they're still here. Because, you know, growing up, it's always about uh, let's talk about the heydays. Let's talk about people that were part of the struggle. Let's talk about Nelson Mandela. And there's we have our own Nelson Mandela's here and, and we have people that um, are inspiring us just day by day by living, by being here on the continent. It's not really about what you can get out of the continent. There is good news to share. And uh, Liz. My last question is, um, is there going to be a book club after this crazy um, <laughs> social distancing is over? Are you planning a virtual book club or a, a book tour? What's in the works for 2021? Yes, there's definitely a couple of book tours that we've, um, my team and I have, have scheduled. And yes. we hope that we can be able um, from June next year to be able to execute um, depending on how this COVID and the pandemic will be. Right. Um, 
There's a virtual book mm. uh, club that will be launching soon in yes. uh, February 2021. Fantastic. Um, on top of the book, I run um, a youth network called the Listen to Nigeria Network. Yes. We have so far over 2,500 members. Nice. And these are young people who the average age is about 27. The people that we always bounce off ideas, even when I was thinking about this book, I just didn't do it blindly. Mm. I was very certain about my my target audience, what they wanted to hear, what would really resonate with them. Right. So it, it's been such a great experience. Oh wow. Congratulations. And you know, to Thank have you. to have that platform and that foresight to have a conversation like this, this is definitely a book that I'm gonna get and pass on to my kids. I'm raising two black girls. They need to, oh. you know, read some of these stories. Um, congratulations once again, Liz, and thank you for this amazing book. The hashtag is youth can. So before I let you go, how can we get this book? So the book can be purchased and everything was Kenya was done here in Kenya because I'm based in Kenya. Amen. Because I've had a lot of questions of the quality in terms of its really superior quality. And I had to assure everybody that everything was done here in Kenya. I think we really undermine the kind of talent that we have. Right. So everything, the production, the printing, um, the team I worked with, majority were under 35, all Kenyan. They're the team that helped me develop develop my own uh, distribution strategy. So you can find the book at www.youthcan.africa. We ship countrywide and worldwide. We also have a partnership. I also have a partnership um, with Textbook Center. So the book can be found in any of their um, bookstores across Kenya. But if out of Kenya, you can get it from www.youthcan.africa. So far, we've shipped over 200 books. So wow. It's quite, this, quite is, this is just amazing. And, you know, you are sharing um, empowering stories from women and men, um, all African stories. And uh, this should definitely be a Christmas buy. If you're thinking, what can I get someone that I care about? They don't have to be African, by the way. Get this book. The Spice Drive with Monique. Spicing up your drive.